Joe's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston are springing up cash. Just sell us your gently used warm weather styles like tees, shorts, sandals, and more. We're paying cash on the spot for gently used spring styles for guys and girls. Support sustainable fashion. This spring, do your thing and recycle the spring-inspired clothes, shoes, and accessories that are just hanging in your closet for cash on the spot. Let your spring clothes bloom into cash at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Recorded. Don't miss a minute of the Sean Hannity Show. I know that there is a segment of, of society that would love a perpetual shutdown, and I guess we could live in a bubble, but who's going to build the bubble if everybody shuts down? Weekday afternoon, starting at 2 on Super Talk 1270. It's time for Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Big Boy. Just get in line. It moves fast. Benchmark Mortgage. Call Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner, at 701-400-3926. Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Natural Health Center. We're here to help you stay well. Trademark Realty. Peak Automotive and Service. And Silver Ranch. Good morning. Happy Thursday. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bakken along with uh, Kevin Oberlander, Dakota Health, and Dakota, uh, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota National Health Center. And uh, I just want to take a couple minutes um, before we start our program today. Uh, uh, we lost a member of the broadcasting community here in the Bismarck Mandan area, a longtime member, uh, member of the uh, Town Square Media family as well. And uh, Dolly Dakota uh, passed away uh succumb from her battle with cancer so uh longtime friend uh um <laughs> she liked to refer to it as my radio wife for many years as uh we worked together in broadcasting she was a producer of uh, uh some of the uh talk shows that i had done in the past as well so uh uh going out to her family uh deepest condolences and uh we lost a uh very prominent member of the bismarck mandan community in the broadcasting world so uh um, very sad day around uh, Town Square Media and uh, around uh, the Bismarck Mandan area as well. Uh, Kevin uh, joining us uh, a little bit of a year in review today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the year went fast. It did. It went yeah. very fast. We've talked about a lot of cool yeah. topics this year. Yeah, we really touched did. on a lot of things. Uh, uh, covered a lot of spaces. You know, I, I, I think if I was going to have one takeaway um, for the year, uh, what we've hit the most is how you need to be interactive with your health care. Uh, health care has changed over the last several years with COVID coming into play as well. It's really kind of um, changed the paradigm of health care and, you know, with interactive online visits, um, it, it, it's kind of forced people a little bit to maybe manage their own personal yeah. health care. So that comes back to the triad of care. Yep. And, and you need to be involved in what your health care looks like for that broad spectrum, that, you know, the equilibrium side of things. Things need to be in balance. And, and you're a big component of how healthy you are. I think there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, over the years, There's there's been a paradigm shift in just how healthcare is administered, um, you know, people are, they have portals, they're looking at their lab work, they're, they have the ability to be so much, people come into the pharmacy and they take out their phone and they'll say, I just had this lab work and these are my cholesterol numbers and they want to put me on medication, I'd like to try something else. So that's, that's fairly new. Previously, people would bring in pieces of paper that were a month old um, but now this is real time. The, the, their lab results on their portal, so it gives it gives people a real opportunity to be more involved. I think it's critical that they are. Um, and for us, and especially in the compounding world, you know, we've talked a lot about the triad of care over the past year, and and I think it's one of the most important things that we do at Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Precision RX Labs. You know, we 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 try to be part of their healthcare team. So your your triad of care is your prescriber or your your caregiver, whether it's a medical doctor, a nurse practitioner, a PA, a naturopathic doctor. There's several more arms of that triad. 
Well, um, and, and the compounding side is a little different, be, uh, so I'm going to exclude that. But you say 10 years ago, um, pharmacy had really gotten, in, like I said, excluding the the um, the compounding side, pharmacy had really gotten, it's like, okay, here's my script, fill it, I'm, this is what I'm going to take. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> there wasn't the interactive side of, hey, this is what was suggested to me or prescribed by my primary care physician, are there some other alternatives? It used to be the only other alternative was, well, does your insurance cover a generic of this drug? Yeah. And that was it. You're, you're, you're totally correct. Um, you know, and we bring these guys up all the time, the, the, the PBMs, the pharmacy benefits managers and their formularies. And they've, they've tried and they've been very successful at making a prescription, a commodity. They want to mail it to you. They want you to take it. They want you to take the drug that they get the biggest rebate on. Um, and if you don't do what they want, you get penalized by your co-pays and the availability. And sometimes they just don't pay for the drug that your doctor prescribes. So I think it's just that much more important that you use your pharmacist as part of your triad, your prescriber, your pharmacist, and yourself working together to try to get the best outcomes. Um, it, it gets difficult um, because we have these mail-order PBM. 70% of our prescriptions are covered by three of these pharmacy benefits managers um, in our Medicare, Medicaid world. So they really narrow down the choices that people are getting. Um, but that's why in, in, in our building, if we can't make a change to your prescription that's beneficial to you, we may look for what, what's, what's the lifestyle? Is, is there a compound that we can cover this with? Is there a supplement that can help? Is there a drug depletion issue? Drugs deplete the body of nutrients. So we oftentimes see people with side effects that's directly related to a depletionary issue of something that the body needs that the drug's depleting you of. So there, there, there's a pretty sound science called drug depletion nutrition now. Um, so we're really going to try to look at all of that for you. And that's why, that's why we, we really build, you know, what we do at Dakota Pharmacy and Precision Rx Labs as the triad of care. And now with the nurse practitioners and the naturopathic doctors who are getting prescriptive privileges that rent space at Dakota Natural Health Center, I think we have a really unique setting to, to create that triad of care all under one roof. I, how often do you talk to a physician or, or a physician's nurse and, and you know, sit down and because, again, the PBMs and the pressure on primary providers, you know, that commodity thing, it's like, okay, I, I remember I used to sit down with my doctor and at least once a year the physical have at least a half hour, 45 minutes with that. That doesn't happen no. anymore. I've got a great primary that, yeah, he was like, okay, how's this going, this going, that we'll sit down and visit. Um, but there's a clock, there's a stopwatch on yeah. that. So how often do you as a uh, a pharmacist sit down and visit with that primary care provider, either through the doctor or the nurse, and discuss a patient, discuss somebody's health care i mean that pro- pro- probably not as much as we used to yeah but. i mean that <laughs> used to be and by what by used to i mean go back before the pbms right and but what we're actually seeing more often now is them where we used to reach out on behalf of the patient we are seeing more of the prescribers reaching back to us for advice what can i do i took a call yesterday there's some alternatives other yeah yeah can you can you help me with this patient but that door opens up because of the compounding side not the traditional pharmaceutical side anymore right and and i think more and more we're our our staff our pharmacy staff is so skilled on at dakota pharmacy that you, you know they're a wealth of knowledge in trying to fix some of these loopholes that we have to try to jump through um Probably one of our biggest issues is making sure that a patient is patient with the process because it sometimes takes a while, um, especially especially this time of year. You know, the holidays are tough. People People's plans are changing in the Medicare world. They were, they're trying to get their prescriptions so they, they're covered in the new year because they don't know what's facing them. So it's a, it's a real tough time of year for us. So, but we're there 
trying to trying to help you solve those problems. We're talking with Kevin Oberlander, kind of a year in review, a little wrap up of some of the things we've talked about. We're going to talk about some of the different medications and treatment processes that are out there as well. Also, we'll get into the uh, 373 brand, uh, some exclusives to uh, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, Precision RX Labs. Uh, this is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bach, along with Kevin Oberlander, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, downtown Bismarck's Corner Drugstore, uh, Precision RX Labs in there. And, uh, okay, so probably the best place to start, PCAB. Yeah, if we're going to talk about the compounding lab, I think PCAB is probably one of the most important things we do. P- PCAP stands for Pharmacy Compounding Accreditation Board. Because if you're not accredited, you're not doing anything. Yeah, well, yeah. Ish. <laughs> and you shouldn't be. Right? Yeah, it, but you it, are. It, it is a voluntary credit, uh, accreditation, but we decided several years ago that um, we were going to investigate it. And once we did the first one, we saw how important it was. Um, I don't think there's any question. My staff will agree. Going through the process, because it's not an easy process. Um, all of our formulas are reviewed. All of our processes, our policy and procedures. Um, we we have a gal um, that literally helps us with our pre-accreditation. She comes to the pharmacy and spends a couple days with Darcy, who was on the show this year, as our compliance officer. She's a pharmacy technician. Does a great job. Um, her and Brenda really go through everything with the fine tooth comb to make sure that we're prepared for the accreditation, which is a visit from a pharmacist that works for PCAB, which is the division of ACHC, the American Accreditation Board that oversees things like hospitals and clinics. So um, it's 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 a robust process, um, but my staff to a person will say it just makes us so much better. Um, it actually, I think it actually makes their job easier because there's no, there's no doubt how things need to be done. There's no question that if 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 there's a process that needs to be done, and it's in our policy and procedures, it has to be done that way. Because if you have a policy and procedures and you're not following it, you don't have a policy and procedures. No. So it, it's 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 super important. Um, we're, we're the only PCAB accredited compounding lab in North Dakota right now. Um, people have started to kind of drop away from it because they don't, it, it's, 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 it's a, a lot, lot of work. work. It's a lot of work and it's also, it's also fairly expensive. So people sometimes are looking at the return on investment, which is business, and have decided that it's just not worth the investment. Um, I guess I disagree. I think it, I think it's important. Um, it's one of the reasons our compounding lab does not take insurance. I will not do business with PBMs on our compounding pharmacy side because they don't want to pay us. You know, they want to pay us cost of ingredients. They don't want to pay us for our skills, our equipment, the lab that we built, which is fabulous. Um, so we have to bypass that. But for the most part, with the high cost of drugs and high copays. I don't know that it's any more expensive than a traditional prescription. And oftentimes it's just better therapy as well. So when you're looking at uh, the compounding side of things and uh, with PCAB, um, again, voluntary, but it provides you a, a sense of accountability. And it's got to provide a sense of accountability or uh, security yeah. or peace of mind from... When you're dealing with whether it's a patient or if you're dealing with a healthcare provider that approaches you and go, is there something else that we can try because the regular course of prescriptions right. not working for this patient? Right. To 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 me, the accreditation piece, and you know, we have a little flyer that we send with every prescription, and part of it is. Would you use a non-accredited dentist? Would you use a surgeon who has not gone through any accreditation or certification or or the surgery center itself, the facility? Um, these are outside eyes from national organizations that are looking at the way things are done to protect the patient. 
And to me, that's what PCAP is doing. It's protecting the patient from poor processes, poor procedures, and some oversight. Well, you know, poor p- materials. Poor too. materials, right. So part, part of what PCAB requires is that if, if there's a certain compound, for instance, that we do a fair amount of, we have to do a lot more independent lab testing of the finished product of aliquots that we're making. Aliquots are diluted um, drugs because they're very, very, you can't weigh them on a scale, so you have to make an aliquot to actually get the proper amount of drug into something. So your aliquots are tested, your finished product's tested, and it's, and your your staff is tested. So if if Jacob is doing a certain amount of one thing, a certain percentage of that has to be sent away of finished product that he's done to make sure that the process that he's doing gives you the outcomes that are desired. So we, we have notebooks full of independent labs. We use three different testing facilities in the country, test, testing the potency and the stability of the products that we're preparing. Shifting gears just a little bit, but staying on the, the compounding side, because this is part that I learned um, over the course of this year in one of our discussions was uh, the the pet care or animal care the 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 you know that side of the compounding world which i didn't even realize kind of existed you know you work with zoos you work with uh yeah wow yes it's just just wow i mean the veterinary medicine side of this and in all different scales and sizes and shapes of animals with the compounding world something i didn't know what works for a horse doesn't work for a cat so you have a very very diverse community there um we have we have great vets in in our in our area i communicate with them a lot i support their state organization um so there, there's, there's not only a triad of care in the human medicine world, there's a triad of care in, in, in vet medicine. It's a little more difficult because a pet can't tell you what's wrong, but owners are pretty in tune to what's going on with their pets for the most part. Um, but yeah, the, the, the opportunities that this has afforded me and it's my favorite part of compounding. You know, we're pet owners. My wife and I have had pets and kids have had pets forever. Involved with the Bismarck Zoo. Yeah, my, my wife's the longest tenured member on, on the zoo board. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm considered Terry, who was a get Terry Lincoln was a guest on the show. We talked about, you know, what goes on at the zoo. Um, Terry, Terry and their board consider me their zoo pharmacist. I do some medication reviews and make sure that, you know, their records are up to snuff. And um, every once in a while, we have to we have to come up with something. Yeah, it's kind of cool in your space because you're the zoo pharmacist rather than, well, just your wife's husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm a zoo volunteer. Yeah, zoo volunteer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, but, I, but that's I, the fascinating I, side of stuff that I didn't realize the extent to which it was out there. Yeah, and... You know, the last the last compounding veterinary seminar we had was in San Diego and it was held at the San Diego Zoo. Yeah, we talked about that. Yep, yep. And it was a, it was a fabulous meeting. We got to do some behind the scenes. Um, one of their vets came and did a morning just talking about the things that they do in-house and how they've started to reach out to some of the f- compounding pharmacies in the San Diego area to help them um, because it might be a one-off and... It might be something that a uh, compounding pharmacy has the raw materials that they can adjust the dose according to the size of the species where in-house they may not have that flexibility. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was one of my favorite meetings that I've been to in a long time. We're talking with Kevin Oberlander, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, and also Precision RX Labs. And uh, we're talking a little bit of a year in review, some of the topics we've covered over the course of this last year. And we've covered a lot of them. Uh, A lot of different uh, products out there, new courses of treatment. We'll get into some of those, um, like the LDN and uh, uh, the Phenol Blue and things like that that we've touched on over the year. Uh, Just a little bit of an update where those things are at now. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Talk of the Town. 
closet in West Ashley and North Charleston are springing up cash. Just sell us your gently used warm weather styles like tees, shorts, sandals, and more. We're paying cash on the spot for gently used spring styles for guys and girls. Support sustainable fashion. This spring, do your thing and recycle the spring-inspired clothes, shoes, and accessories that are just hanging in your closet for cash on the spot. Let your spring clothes bloom into cash at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Bakken, weekday morning starting at 9 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Big Boy. Just get in line. It moves fast. Benchmark Mortgage. Call Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner, at 701-400-3926. Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Natural Health Center. We're here to help you stay well. Trademark Realty. Peak Automotive and Service. And Silver Ranch. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Kind of a year in review with uh, Kevin Oberlander, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, downtown Bismarck's corner drugstore. We're talking about some of the topics we've talked about. A little update on uh, some of them over the past year. Uh, LDN, low dose yeah, naltrexone. Yeah. That's uh, another one we've talked about that you thought that there was some pretty good movement from a treatment perspective with yeah. the, that product so if we look at our top three things that we compound we already covered veterinary compounding um our 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 third largest thing that we compound is a single thing called low dose naltrexone um very very interesting drug naltrexone was um released and fda approved in the 80s and 90s for addiction um, and alcoholism, it's an, it's an opiate receptor blocker. Um, so if somebody is addicted to heroin, naltrexone is one of the things that w- might be court-ordered that they take because if they ingest a narcotic, they, they, they go into a draw. Um, a Dr. Bahari and his partner who were treating AIDS patients in New York City at the time, and Bahari's a really, really smart guy, he looked at the chemical structure of naltrexone and figured if he gave it to his AIDS patients in a very, very low dose, it would increase their immune function. And he was right. So his, where addicted patients were given two, three, 400 milligram doses a day, he was using daily doses of one, one and a half milligrams up to four and a half. And he was proving that he could increase the endorphin output in his AIDS patients by 300%. So not only did they feel better, their overall outlook was better and surprising their, their immune function improved. So his patients, they didn't, they didn't live because there were none of the AIDS cocktails at the time, but his patients were living longer and living better lives and better quality of life, better quality of life. Um, that was, you know, that was several decades ago, and what's that was ha- kind of just cracking the door a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. the technology or the, or the 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 scientific, yep, it's it, the it, science is is there. Yeah. There's a ton of science behind it, and there's it. a lot of different things that it it has been yep looked at helping. With. So my exposure to it was I had an MS patient from the northern part of the state called me and asked me if we compounded it, and I had never heard of it. Um, so. That was really the stimulus to do some research. And PubMed is really a go-to for medical providers looking at peer-reviewed literature. There were maybe 100 articles on low-dose naltrexone on PubMed at the time that I started looking at it. We did compound it for this individual for his MS, um, and it actually helped him tremendously. And he got to be he got to the point where... He really understood what it was doing for him. He would call me and say, I think we need to lower my dose for a couple months. It, it's a little tricky. There's a magic spot for patients. So the triad of care is really critical in this. Um, but now there's like 2,500 articles on PubMed. It's super, super researched. Um, a drug company did try to look at it at, at coming to market with it. But we make 18 different strengths right now um, because everybody's different. And a pharmaceutical company might make 
one, two, three dosages. So they're really kind of missing out on um, the the potential. So it, it, it remains a compound. It's something that we do a ton of. Um, we've helped some people that it was kind of like, I just don't know what to do anymore. And um, that's, that's from, from a, from a caregiver's perspective and working with a prescriber, um, you know, it's a high five sometimes when you get the results that you see. So it's pretty cool. And still progressing from a, a scientific and a, oh, a, a medical. Yeah. There's I mean, just kind of tip of the iceberg right now. And, and going back several decades yeah. with the first work on the AIDS side of things, you know, it was there a pause or was it just, no, because I now I it, again it's it's out in the public and and there's some research being done here. Right. So there was a couple organizations and one in particular, um, it's a health trust out of the United Kingdom and the Linda Ellsgood is really the the driving force behind it. And I've I've met Linda. She actually had MS or does have MS, and doctors had kind of given up on her, told her to get her affairs in order, and she found LDN which was difficult in the European market. Um, she did a lecture to us and she, she showed a picture of herself that she hated because she was in a wheelchair in, in Netherlands. She wanted to make a trip there because she'd never been there. Um, five years later, she was in Chicago standing at the podium lecturing to us about her experience oh, with LDN. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, but the health trust really is... She's raising funds through this United Kingdom Trust to fund research. Um, there are now three LDN books that we have at the store. Um, they're actually free. So if anybody's interested, just stop and ask for an LDN book. If you think a lot of times people read it and they find themselves in there. They're like, hey, I'm I'm page 78. This is exactly what I have going on. And. You know, now we're seeing it used for things like long COVID and there's like there's like almost 200 different medical maladies that LDN has been prescribed for and published with success. Um, but it's medicine. It doesn't work for everybody and it it can take a while. So people have to be very, very patient and work through the all, all the dosage changes. And one of the other things we talked about, too, is uh, methylene blue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which... which, which so is your lab blue yet? Yeah, you know, it's been one of our failures, to be honest with you. There's a fair amount of it being done, um, but there's a high risk with it because it's a it's an industrial dye, mm-hmm. and it really, really stains your facility. So we've done a few dry runs. We're still working on it. Um, I still have a list of people that are interested. The interesting thing about methylene blue is it's it powers the mitochondria, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, and... The thing that I'm hearing through my colleagues, because we have monthly meetings with fellow compounding pharmacies across the country, is they're seeing some results with some dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, it may not, it may not help recover, but it seems to slow the progression. So, um, I met with my staff on our high on our to do list is to really get this figured out so we can talk about it next year and not turn the lab blue and not turn the lab blue (laughs) (laughs) because we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, there's some people that have had uh, failures of different sorts where their lab is now blue. Yep. Uh, because it is a very heavy industrial dye. Uh, we're talking with Kevin Oberland at Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, kind of a year in review of what we do Thursday mornings. Uh, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, downtown Bismarck's corner drugstore. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. One Super Talk. Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston are springing up cash. Just sell us your gently used warm weather styles like tees, shorts, sandals, and more. We're paying cash on the spot for gently used spring styles for guys and girls. Support sustainable fashion. This spring, do your thing and recycle the spring-inspired clothes, shoes, and accessories that are just hanging in your closet for cash on the spot. Let your spring clothes bloom into cash at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. D. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bogg along with Kevin Oberlander, Dakota Pharmacy, Dakota Natural Health Center, downtown Bismarck's corner drugstore. And uh, a little bit of a year in review, some of the things that, uh, you know, we've heard about successes. We've heard about some failures. Yeah, we've yeah. Heard, you know, it, it just, it, it comes with the... 
with the landscape. It does. And uh, one of the successes that I want to talk about uh, you've really had is your partnership with uh, 373 Brands. Um, the SEPA Max, the Soften Lotion, the Soften Line. Yeah. Um, that's really a, a little shining piece of uh, what uh, Dakota Pharmacy does. Yeah, yeah Rand, we had Randy on the show yep. earlier this year. Um, Randy walked into the pharmacy. He had started a 373 brand company, and he had one product. It was a, it was an eczema cream, which is an also called, called skin cream, and he just wanted to know if I'd carry it in the store. Um, and I'm like, sure. And it was an interesting story. It was a 100-year-old formula from Poland that his family had um, kind of gifted to him 13 years ago. But it, it got me to thinking, you know, I have have several compounds that I've formulated personally over the years, spending some evenings in the labs and development over the last 30 years. And a few really came to the forefront. So I literally recipe card formulas because this was 20, 25 years in the making. So I turned those over to Randy and just said, can you access ingredients? Is this something that you think you can do? And, you know, I'd done a lot of the work on the process, the heat, um, the, 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 the order that things are put together and we put our minds together with what his formula was doing and what I did. And we went to market with these just at the end of the year. Um, so we have, um, the, the skin cream, which is Randy's formula. Um, we developed something called Sorgon, which we're seeing some success in some, we have a diabetic foot ulcer patient in Arkansas that found us. Um, so we have we have a one case study on that and with some success. Um, softened lotion was really kind of one of my babies, and so we have softened lotion and um, we sold it in the store for several years, but it, it's now back and um, it kind of jumps off the shelf. It's it's very popular, and I think two of our best formulas are soften EM, which is a cream that has emu oil in it. Um, emu oil has a lot of medical properties. Um, we talked about that on the show previously. And then my absolute favorite is a lip balm that I developed and trademarked the name SEPA Max. So we have these five products for um, a really top notch. Um, we're seeing some movement. We're getting some e-commerce traffic. Um, I just was telling Steve, I got an email from a gentleman from Illinois um, through our website introducing himself. His dad lived in Bismarck in 1910. Um, he'd never been here, but he, he thought it was really interesting. He saw saw a Facebook post on the softened lotion and he had ordered some and he wanted to send a note how pleased he was with the results he was getting. Um, the other thing that's, and you know, we're really always trying to be new and innovative and find new things. And I have some really cool relationships in the country. And Well, some of the relationships <clears throat> you have in, in the dental community. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've talked about the, the dental side yeah. of what you've worked on, but now you've got something new yeah. in the dental side that, you know, I... I Marlo Anderson, our guru of geek, uh, him and I were talking, uh, and I brought it up on on our program on the Tech Ranch on Saturday um, about the NASA connection yeah. with this product, which I think is cool. It's unbelievable. So through Perio Protect, which has been a partner of mine in the dental space for years, I developed a gel that's used in their trays for gum disease. Um, I, m I met one of their dentists who introduced me to... Dr. Emily Stein, who's a microbiologist, um, who was doing some work at Stanford at the time. Um, and she developed a product. She's calling it a prebiotic, and she did it trying to help her grandmother who had Alzheimer's and was was resisting, uh, you know, flossing and brushing. So her mouth was kind of a mess. So she developed this formulation and put it into a lozenge. And it's used after meals, and it literally kills or breaks down the biofilm that causes gum disease. She's proven it at Stanford. She has data to prove it. And we know it's proven to work because it's literally being used in the International Space Station. Yeah, NASA, NASA. uses it. <laughs> yeah. Na what, how do you think <clears throat> astronauts brush their teeth? Yeah, well, I think that's it. it. Yeah, it, it, it's probably not easy to brush your teeth with zero gravity, so they're using... Um, so. Very, very soon, we're going to have a product in the pharmacy called Protectin. It's through another relationship, and it will be these lozenges of Dr. Emily Stein's. I, I can't wait. I mean, oh, yeah. you, you talk about that, that 
connecting peace to NASA and yeah. space and then go back to where that came from and, and what that can mean to patients that, you know, maybe dementia or... You or, know, or, or, or patients in general. Patients in general, somebody yeah. who... Well, think of somebody who... If, if you broke your jaw and you had your wa- jaw right. wired shut, how do you brush your teeth? Yeah. You know, yep. things like that. It yeah. just, uh, but again, Dakota and, Pharmacy and, and Dakota Natural Health Center it'll be, being, it'll, it'll be on the shelf in Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah. It, and I find that absolutely amazing. And the innovation and comes from the, the compounding world and, uh, that little jewel that we've got, uh, downtown Bismarck's corner drugstore. You know, thanks for being in the community, Kevin. Hey, love Appreciate it. it. Thank, thanks for having me. I, I love doing the show next week because it's right after the new year. We're going to talk new year's resolutions and health. Yep. And, and we have a, we have a really special guest. We will. Uh, this is Talk of the Town on Super Talk twelve seventy. Happy New Year, Kevin. This Thank is you. Talk of the Town on Super Talk twelve seventy. KLXX AM Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square Media Station, broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio. The Todd Starnes Daily Update, weekday mornings at eleven thirty on Super Talk twelve seventy and the free Super Talk twelve seventy app. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Big Boy. Just get in line. It moves fast. Benchmark Mortgage. Call Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner, at 701-400-3926. Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Natural Health Center. We're here to help you stay well. Trademark Realty. Peak Automotive and Service. And Silver Ranch. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bach, along with Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner over at Benchmark Mortgage. Give him a call at 701 400 3926. Joe, did you have a good Christmas? I did. How about you? Uh, not bad. Pretty low key this year. Yeah, it's one of those Christmases where they, it seems like. <laughs> We're going to be off forever because just the way the holidays are landing. Yeah, with the Monday and then yeah. the Monday and yeah. it just like nobody was working this week. Right. I was here. Yeah, were you? Yeah, yeah. A couple days and nobody's in the studio. I was thinking, of, I was thinking about you. Were you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> with your yeah. slippers and bathrobe on and that's exactly drinking right. your I'm, cup of coffee and yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what I was doing. Uh, so... Uh, Heading into the Christmas holiday and New Year's and everything's kind of just settled, a little on hold, a little pause. We talk about the Fed pausing, but uh, this is just kind of a a pause in the year because it happens every year this way. Well, yeah, th- there there is some there there is some news out there in the the interest rate world. I, and rates pretty steady; they're pretty even. Um, no real. Uh, the kind of the volatility has been out of the market for about the last week. Um, they've been trading, uh, bonds have been trading sideways, keeping interest rates pretty stable. But there were some hawkish comments out of the ECB, um, the European Central Bank. And, uh, and that, that doesn't, that's, that's, set, that certainly doesn't set a great tone, uh, for interest rates going into the first year. Um, uh, but the 10 year yield or the 10 year treasury still below four at 3.81. Um, but off of its low, three point seven eight, and you know, um, uh, the, but the, some other good news: weekly initial jobless claims up twelve thousand, so uh, to two hundred eighteen versus the two ten expected. So we saw jobless claims rise, and yeah, as you know, that's something that uh, this time of year you you, know, you kind of usually maybe, you don't see that happen this time of year yeah. unless you're in broadcasting because the big companies always it, rip a bunch of employees but it, um, but usually you see jobless claims go down this time of the year because people start picking up uh, just Christmas help out jobs part time jobs um, you didn't see that bounce this year you don't year. normally get laid off right after Christmas like, yeah I mean in terms of like the retail sector I don't, so I don't know where those I don't know where those jobs came from, like, or I mean, where the claims came from. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, so the overall, the mortgage market guides advice is to, you know, don't be in a hurry to lock, consider locking loans that are closing really soon, but float most files. And, um, and so there's nothing really, uh, but you're right. There isn't, it's not like there's headline after headline. Um, and there's not a ton of volatility. 
uh, happening right now, right now in the market. So, um, you know, it, it is nice. It is nice when the market also takes a holiday. So we all don't have to watch it nonstop. <laughs> not that, you know, not that I can control it or anything like that, but you know what I mean. Um, the, but it is, um, but it is nice when things at least kind of give us a break until going into the new year. And, and, uh, although those jobless claims, um, that's, that's a surprise. And, and that'll carry over into the new year as well. 2024 should. 2024 is going to be a very interesting year because as you know, we've had this, these two divides in the opinions. We've had the, the, the opinion that, that, you know, we're going to have this nice soft landing that the Fed is masterfully coordinated this effort around inflation to um, have a market that is is going to, you know, just gently slow into its perfect zone and inflation will come into check at 2% and everything will be great. Um, and then we have this other side that like looks at signals like that and says, no, we told you this is the Fed was too hot. And that this is going to come crashing down around us, and uh, that you know we're going to we're going to run into a recession. That this is going to be worse than expected. Um, that would be the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's <laughs> and uh, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Um, you know, this time of year is always a good time to turn to for to the bowtie economist for wisdom. You know, uh, Elliot Eisenberg. And so here's um, his last post um, on the 27th. While the equity bull market has been unstoppable, it looks unusual. 72% of equities in the S&P 500 have underperformed the index. This is the highest total since at least 2000. 2020 was the next worst year when slightly over 60% underperformed. Within the 11 sectors of the S&P 500, except for tech, where 39.7% uh, of the firms underperformed. Elsewhere, the underperformance has ranged from 54.5 to 97.3. Okay, that's a little doom and gloom. Well, I, I mean, it, it is interesting that uh, the S&P has had so much underperformance um, since 2020, right? Um, here's, here's, a, here's a little home price. Uh, national home prices rose 0.65% month over month in October and 4.8% year over year, according to the Case Shiller Index. October is a three-month average of August, September, and October closing prices. So there is some lag in the overall uh, index. For the second month in a row, Detroit is tops with a year-over-year -year gain of 8.1%, followed by San Diego at 7.2%. San Francisco is the weakest, down 8.1% from recent peak. I got to be honest with you. When I think of like hot housing markets, I don't think of Detroit. No. Well, but actually, having lived in Michigan, the caveat to that, I would say, was once you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> Serious. I, I'm not well, kidding about that. That's not a joke. It, it's, if you take a look at Detroit, and it, it had become a third world country in a lot of neighborhoods, and that bad, where do you go from there? You, you well, have to go Especially like Flint. Yeah. But murder capital of Michigan, yeah. Yeah, but you, uh, uh, but it does play into the backstories of a lot of the other headlines we read when we're talking about jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Because obviously the job picture in Detroit must be improving dramatically to drive an eight point one percent improvement year over year in housing. Well, it improved greatly after the they got done with the strike this yeah. summer. So with the auto unions being on strike. There was a big improvement in the job market there and because they were caught a little bit in the midst of a changeover in the auto industry to electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at ramping up an entire new product line. And they did it in Detroit. And then in Detroit. It's Detroit. Which is great. Which is isn't that great. Like, it's great to see that coming back to that city and... Um, but on the but when, when we always sit here and we go, well, where are all these jobs coming from? Yeah. Right. Well, here's a, you know, here's an example of where you wouldn't even think of Detroit being a hot housing market, but there it is. Yeah, there you go. They're not all meth houses. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> making product in front of North Dakota. Uh, this is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. We're talking with Joe Sheehan. Here's your mortgage planner over Benchmark Mortgage. Give him a call, 701-400-3926 on Super Talk 1270. Why? Super Talk. Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston are springing up cash. Just sell us your gently used warm weather styles like tees, shorts, sandals, and more. We're paying cash on the spot for gently used spring styles for guys and girls. Support sustainable fashion. This spring, do your thing and recycle the spring-inspired clothes, shoes, and accessories that are just hanging in your closet for cash on the spot. Let your spring clothes bloom into cash at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bagelang with Joe Sheehan. He is your mortgage planner over Benchmark Mortgage. Give him a call at 701 400 3926. Uh, job rates, uh, claims up a little bit, uh, which is weird heading into. Uh, the end of the year, when you're looking at those end of the year reports, uh, but uh, is it safe to say we're just kind of in a state of flux and nobody really knows or understands or everybody's just tired and goes, okay, just, all right, a little break for the holidays. We're going to stop. I I, I need to not think about stuff for a while because my brain hurts. Is is that where we're at, Joe? Yeah, thankfully. Thankfully, things seem to be you know, it's it's not like you wake up after the holidays and it's going to be a big uh, slam in the market here, you know. So that's nice. I mean. Um, not your typical New Year's hangover? Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> and, you know, speaking of that, like, you know, so regarding, you know, debt, um, is there, are people going to have a big debt hangover after? we gotten away from that for a few years. People actually, you know, through the Trump presidency and then into COVID, um, people had gotten away from credit card debt. And the economy was good, and then COVID kind of put a pause. The supply chain, things weren't available. Um, people weren't racking up credit card debt. And I, I thought we'd gotten out of that habit because that's a bad habit to be in. And now this year, you're taking a look at what the economy is doing, and you're looking at the numbers with credit card debt. And we're right back to square one. I think there's going to be a credit card debt well, hangover coming in January. People are going to go... <clears throat> Well, so this is an, so this is interesting. This is uh, this has to do with the generational pers- generational perspective on on uh, uh, credit card debt. So the percentage of adults in the greatest generation cohort who plan to take on debt to finance holiday spending um, was under five percent. So under five percent of the World War II generation would take on debt for holiday spending. For baby boomers, the percentage was higher at fourteen percent. For Gen X, the percentage was an elevated 22%. And for millennials, is a surprising 47%. <laughs> haven't learned yet. Larger than any other cohort. For Generation Z, the percentage was an uncomfortably high 44.5%. Wow. See, I remember back in college when it's like everybody gave college students free credit cards, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, hey, free money, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There's a statement that comes due and you have to pay that off. Yep. I, most people my generation learned that lesson the hard way in college. Um, it's kind of like the old, it, we've gotten away from that now because I, I remember legitimately having this conversation with friends of mine. I've got money. I still have check blanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not out of money. I have check blanks. What are you talking about? I yeah, have we're, we're good, right? Just write a check for that. Just write a check. <laughs> it's like, but, and then it turned into the credit card debt. And then, but over 2019, 2020, people caught up. People got out of that. The economy was good. And then it all paused with COVID. And now I see that the older generations who learned that lesson and figured it out. And now Gen Z, who hasn't figured, is the mindset with them? Well, they paid off my student loans, so maybe they'll pay off my credit card debt, too. I I, I don't get it. Yeah, well, and so the good news for, or the bad news for mom and dad is that, you know, if you, all those gifts you got from the college bookstore from your 
Uh, kid probably on credits. <laughs> <laughs> Proud least, mom of so and such university. Or, or at yeah. least forty three per whatever that was that number was at least forty three point seven seven percent was or something. Um, yeah, so I'm like I said, it's twenty twenty four is going to be is is going to be interesting. We see all kinds of signals uh, contradicting each other both ways, right? I mean, and so it's going to be. Which one's going to win? Which one's so gonna again, win? state of flux. Hmm? Is there a direction that? Because I don't see one. I, is there something that in your brain of working all these numbers? I, I just I to me, I don't see a, a a solid direction coming out into the new year. I think the I I, I don't see a. Um, I don't know what the markets are going to do. I, I have no idea what like the stock market's going to do. I can't tell okay, you Okay, that. that frightens me because going back when we started doing this, you always were six months ahead of, yeah, uh, yep, this is, and it happened, and it happened, and it happened. and Yeah, yeah, and then I, I don't know. That that one I don't, I don't know because I, I don't know about the soft landing and, you know, the control on inflation, and it, it does seem like... Uh, it, it just, it's counterintuitive to believe you could, you could put the hammer down on spending like we did and we're just going to come out of it just fine. No whiplash, right? I mean, I mean, it just, it just doesn't seem, but now the the economy is like, you know, you you start hearing economists say things where this economy is different in terms of all the other you know, we, we when we started this back in 2020 and we were talking about what was going on and you and I would talk about how this was an unprecedented economy, mm-hmm. right? And, um, okay, well, some of the things that make it an unprecedented economy, part, part of the reason why all the indicators don't work together anymore is because there's been massive shifts in percentages of the GDP in things like healthcare. Right. And we talked about how healthcare was like in 1950, healthcare was like the small percentage of the GDP. And, but now healthcare is like 30%. Well, and in the big the part GDP. of that too is the pharmaceutical industry has grown to be this massive juggernaut that didn't exist back in the 50s either. Right. Right. So, so, so there's, well, what's when? When are you going to stop healthcare? Right? Do you like, want a legitimate answer for that? <laughs> I mean, the other way healthcare stops is when you're dead. Yeah. So, so like we got an aging population. We've got we've got a growing aging population. We've got apparently, you know, our our millennial uh, Z generation, you know, is all suffering from. Anxiety or some sort of of uh, ADHD or some sort. There's of, a pill for that. Uh, yeah, right. They're all good. Um, I mean, we're an emotional mess from from early on age to where you know then we're you know heart disease and everything else from and, and we got an epidemic obesity problem. Where where how do you cut healthcare spending? Yeah, you're not. And if it's so, if it's that big of a part of the GDP, maybe there are parts of the economy that are going to insulate the volatility we used to see. I don't know. Maybe. You know, my question is: when you see the job jobless claims rising, and then where things are at with credit card debt after the new year, and that's a bad intersection. <laughs> that's really. A bad intersection. Uh, you're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bach, along with Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner over at Benchmark Mortgage. Give him a call at 701 400 3926. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Here, Talk of the Town. Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston are springing up cash. Just sell us your gently used warm weather styles like tees, shorts, sandals, and more. We're paying cash on the spot for gently used spring styles for guys and girls. Support sustainable fashion. This spring, do your thing and recycle the spring inspired clothes clothes, shoes, and accessories that are just hanging in your closet for cash on the spot. Let your spring clothes bloom into cash at Plato's Closet. 
Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Balkan, weekday morning starting at 9 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Big Boy. Just get in line, it moves fast. Benchmark Mortgage. Call Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner, at 701 400 3926. Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Natural Health Center. We're here to help you stay well. Trademark Realty, Peak Automotive and Service, and Silver Ranch. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bach, along with Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner over at Benchmark Mortgage. Uh, give him a call at 701-400-3926. And uh, we're talking about health care. And Joe and I had an opportunity to sit down with Brian Ritter from Sanford Health and talk a little bit about health care and how that plays into the Bismarck Mandan market and some markets in general. What I guess while we were talking about the region and, and competitors, is what is the... Is the relationship are are CHI and and Sanford still silos or are are in this kind of an environment where you have shortages where you have are there partnerships across competitors in the healthcare? Oh, certainly. Space? We've got we've got great partners in healthcare here in Bismarck Mandan, whether it's um, with Ascension Mid Dakota, whether it's CHI St. Alexis, and of course at Sanford, we're blessed in Bismarck Mandan to have as much healthcare as we do. And so, to Joe's point about. We're working together. Absolutely, there's there are conversations happening between our providers, conversations happening between our administration, and probably the best example I can give you of that is the Bismarck Cancer Center. That's a great partnership, honestly. Just I just experienced that one with family. BC, BCC amazing. has been around for more than twenty five years now, and that is a great example. It's a joint venture. It's jointly owned between CHI and Alexis Health as well as Sanford Health. That board of directors is comprised of three reps from Sanford, three reps from CHI St. Alexis. And that facility exists because we know that's what's best for Bismarck Mandan. And so when we are trying to answer that question I just mentioned earlier, right, about what is best for the patient, well, in this case, BCC is best for the patient. And that's tr- and that structure as a joint venture between Sanford and CHI is what's best for the patient. And so, yes, we're going to compete. And, yes, we want to be the best facilities we possibly can. But I think we're also big enough to understand that sometimes to best serve our patients, it's going to take a little bit different arrangement. And the Bismarck Cancer Center is a prime example of that. You mentioned um, adding 36 beds onto Sanford, and uh, I don't think people really realized until after COVID because we started hearing about uh, the number of beds available uh, and at capacity or over capacity and not being able to take patients and patients having to go to Fargo, for example. Um, a lot of that wasn't because a physical bed wasn't available. It was because the staff to support that physical bed. And that comes back to the workforce issue. That That's the, the big piece. When you say adding 36 beds, What's that support number look like from a doctor's, nurses, CNAs, uh, cleaning staff? There's a lot of jobs there. Absolutely. And, and Steve Steve raises a good point that I didn't touch on this earlier, but if you talk about that issue of capacity, we are always going to be able to support and to serve Bismarck Mandan and the surrounding area. We've staffed appropriately. We've increased access. We've increased staffing. We feel very good about where we're at. But we know that Bismarck Mandan is not just going to stay this size, right? I mean, Steve and Joe and I have been in Bismarck for a long time. <clears throat> if you look over the last 20 years, again, I always use a stat. If you go back to the year 2000, we just crossed over. We're about a billion-dollar economy, about 100,000 in population. Fast forward to today, we're 135,000 in population. We're probably a little over about a $2 billion economy now. That's a lot of growth. And so back to Steve's question, you take that into account the last 20 years, you look ahead now 20 years, that's why we're adding beds. Those 36 beds are a big deal because we're going to be able to serve more patients. But then along with that, we are going to have to hire more RNs. Well, that's why I go back to the strategy we talked about earlier, right? Growing our own through partnerships with Mary and BSC and United Tribes. That's where we're trying to attract new talent from all over the world because you're right. It's not just a bed. It's not just a room. It's the people who are going to help serve the patient who is laying in that bed in that room. But you're, But the growth is... It's kind of a little bit, I wouldn't say exponential is probably not the right word, but feels that way for, for the health facilities because of what you said of us being regional and that 
people. There's as, a multiplier involved. As the, yeah, as the aging There's population. Yeah, as the aging population happens. You know, we experience this in the housing industry. Who you know, highest level of cash sales ever in the market. How how who are these cash buyers? Well, a lot of them are people moving off the farms, and they're just moving closer to healthcare. Period. They're just they're coming from smaller communities. They're coming from their, you know, from from where they lived in the rural markets, and they're just they're as they've aged, they're just deciding to live closer to the healthcare. You know, some fascinating conversations with Brian uh, there, Joe, and it it kind of brings up an interesting question on the Bismarck Mandan Lincoln housing market because if you're looking at and we talked a little bit about healthcare being such a big component, uh, such a big piece of the GDP. And I would say it's probably maybe a little higher than that here. But now you're looking at the different pieces where uh, you're attracting the students, you're attracting the workers, you're attracting, uh, you know, that aging population is going to go to where uh, they can get that health care. Uh, but from a student perspective, all the way up to hiring RNs and doctors and CNAs and support staff, what does that do to a housing market? I mean, right now we're at a very tight housing market in the Bismarck Mandan area. Mm-hmm. I don't see that easing up either in the new year. No, uh, I, well, we've got the locked in owners, right? We've got the people who are locked into lower interest rates. Now, there is some surveys out there that have showed that the locked in owners are now, if they can find interest rates in the fives, they might be willing to consider moving on because people the people just their housing needs change right i mean you just you know regardless of whether your interest rate is three percent or not um uh, sometimes well, it, the housing need changes at two or three percent it was once over needs now at five percent you're getting back to where the needs are yeah. an option again because yeah. it's like hey we just want a different house and uh mm-hmm. that one's got a pool okay great or a different view great at two percent who cares Right. But yeah, but people who are, who are locked in from downsizing or building or uh, family expansions, uh, growing families or family contractions, you know, uh, empty nesters, uh, they're starting to go, OK, well, wait a minute, maybe maybe we can reconsider this and, and move. So hopefully we'll start to see some some listings out there that will help people. Uh, the, there are plenty of buyers. That's the key. There are plenty of buyers. Um, it's really just being able to find houses that they'll they can afford. And the only market that's really stuck is the market over 650. Um, that's, that's the market where, um, you know, the listings have a little bit of time out there before they find somebody that, that, that will take them off the market. But, but, um, but overall, I I think that healthcare is a huge, I mean, if you took the state capital out of the economy, what would, where would healthcare rank? Yeah. It'd be right up there. I mean, it'd be, it'd be that in education. And of course, obviously, it's more dynamic than that. Part of the reason we have the healthcare we have is because the state capital drives some of that need. But, but I'm just, I mean, it's clearly uh, the healthcare is a, it's a massive driving force in, in uh, our housing economy. And, and plus, those are great jobs, right? I mean, they're higher paying. Well, you mentioned jobs that, that can help afford housing. You mentioned the six fifty and up market and how there's a, a little bit of a, a stagnation in that. Um, what about the lower end of that? Uh, are there, because I'm looking at inventory issues everywhere else, is, is are there opportunities out there sub 200? Uh, what are the opportunities from two to three? Three to 350, 400. I, you know, now you're looking at inventory as well. The hottest market is, is clearly 250 to 400. And um, 250 to 350 is clearly the hottest. And well-conditioned properties below 300 are sold immediately um, because, well, well, just you don't have, if you, if you can, the updates and- if, if, if they've been, you know, if they're clean, you don't have peeling paint, bad windows, that kind of thing. Um, Not that it needs an updated bathroom or an updated kitchen. It's, right. it's, it's just a clean property. Yeah, it's just a clean property. Um, you're not going to have any FHA issues with it, for example. Um, those, those properties are really, those properties are really moving off the market. Now, if it's updated, it's hard to get something that's completely updated under 300 though. I just, uh, that's a fact that's, you know, nice and clean and completely updated. Um, anything that, that's in that range is probably something like a two bedroom or doesn't have a garage or has some other kind of 
you know, drawback, but it probably still moves fast, you know. Doesn't have that extra half a bath or whatever right. you're looking for, or you might have to figure that out with an update plan yeah. as part of that. Uh, speaking of plans, we're, we're going to try to map out, okay, what should people's plans be coming into the new year and, and getting into the position where you have that plan, and if you do want to make a purchase or uh, upsize, downsize, be mobile in the market, you got to have a plan. And if you've got kids that are renting, you'll want to listen to the next segment because this is the key to get them out. Uh, this is Talk of the Town with Joe Sheehan. Here's your mortgage plan over at Benchmark Mortgage, 701-400-3926 on Super Talk 1270. Super Talk. Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston are springing up cash. Just sell us your gently used warm weather styles like tees, shorts, sandals, and more. We're paying cash on the spot for gently used spring styles for guys and girls. Support sustainable fashion. This spring, do your thing and recycle the spring-inspired clothes, shoes, and accessories that are just hanging in your closet for cash on the spot. Let your spring clothes bloom into cash at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bike along with Joe Sheehan, your mortgage planner over at Benchmark Mortgage. Give him a call at 701 400 3926. All right, we're heading into the new year. You got to have a plan. You should have a plan in place yeah. by now if you don't get one. And, right. And I'm going to tell you right now if you are, if, you, if you're a parent right now, and you've got you've got young married kids or young kids that are engaged or coupled or whatever whatever their situation is and they're renting right and 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 you want them or they're be, living in your basement or they're living you in your just basement want them out. You just want them out <laughs> all the above apply let's go ahead and make the let's make the laundry list of reasons for them to go buy a house you know we're coming into tax return season and tax refund season and literally, the North Dakota Housing Program, which you know, I think is one of those things. I, I honestly can I can honestly say we're one of the best at it. There, there are programs on there well, that you literally can buy a home for your tax refund. Imagine that. Really? Absolutely. Because what what's your average tax refund? What if I have to pay in? Well, then <laughs> can't help you. <laughs> Can't help you. Yeah, so a lot of people get you know, five, six grand in that range. Yeah, so five hundred bucks minimum investment. Wow, five hundred dollar minimum investment to to use the uh, North Dakota Housing Finance Agency Start programs, and and so you literally and like for example on the DECA program, the lower income one, five point nine percent interest rate, five point nine interest rate, and you literally could go into the house with five hundred dollars. It's wow. po- it's possible, right? So if your kids coming up and they don't think, oh man, we got to save up, we don't have the money, we'd never be able to own a house, blah 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 blah, not most true. Pa- most parents would pitch that five hundred bucks right in, especially if they're living <laughs> in your basement. You be money ahead. You be money ahead on the grocery bill. Alone. Yes, and it's Costco savings right there. <laughs> um, they, uh, but but quite honestly, so the tax refund season is a it should be the boondoggle. Boom for first time home buyers because you're getting your tax refund and you should be exploring. Um, you should be exploring home ownership in this first quarter before you, you're, and, and, and just mark that tax refund as, as your home ownership fund to start the year until you know otherwise. I, I, it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite things to do is help young couples, families achieve home ownership in the first quarter of the year. And, and we do it with less than a thousand bucks, man. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And, and, you know, you set them on the road to, you know, building equity and being a homeowner and getting them out of the, out of the renting. Not that renting's bad, you know, I mean, it's, I am not, it's not a piece picking of on affordable housing. It not, really yeah, is. I'm not picking on renting. I'm just saying, but when people want to own a home, the, sometimes people set the bar way too far out there for what they think it takes to own a home. And it literally is possible to do it with your tax refund. And so if you have kids that, that, or if you have, you know, young people that, hey, they're ready to buy their first home, call me. We set up a plan. We set up a home buying plan. We set up a home shopping plan. And we get them out there with literally their tax refund 
And from a Is buyer's it? perspective, winter, this time of the year, it's, it's a good time to buy. You, get you don't some have to deals. necessarily move yet, but it's a you good can't time get, to buy. buy. Think about it. You get an offering on a house at the end of January. When are you moving? Yeah. It's not terrible. Yeah, March, April. Yeah, March, yeah. This has been Talk of the Town. Give Joe Sheehan a call. He's your mortgage planner over at Benchmark, 701-400-3926, Super Talk 1270. KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square media station, broadcasting from the VIEW Community Credit Union Studio. Mike Rowe here with a radical idea. If you want to see more companies make more things in this country, buy more things from more companies who make things in this country. I refer in this case to the incredible t-shirts, sweatshirts, blue jeans, and more made by my friends at American Giant. Everything American Giant makes is made in the United States. And right now, you can take 20% off your first order at American-Giant.com slash Mike. That's American-Giant.com slash Mike. 